On today's episode, we say goodbye to one of the originals. Everyone is jumping about the new Star Wars trailer, especially the people who are in it. Only one month until Jessica Jones, but first we're seeing the debut of another unstoppable woman. And despite a highly anticipated crossover event, Fox seems to have resigned themselves to being idiots. After that, I answer a Halloween movie challenge. And Vin Diesel stars in a new supernatural thriller find out what I thought a little later. All this and much more on this episode of E-Money's Reviews. Welcome to the show, and happy Halloween. It's the week of Halloween, and it's episode 13. Didn't even plan that. just worked out that way. Do you like my costume? I'm doing a little extra fox bashing today, so I thought I should look the part. But we'll get to that in a minute. First, let's talk about what everyone on social media is talking about, and I'm not even going to bother with the spoiler alert, because there's no way you're watching this episode, and you haven't heard by now. Glenn's dead. There. I said it. Or is he? Of course, we all saw what happened. Nicholas was a dumbass and shot himself in the head. Then, when he fell, he took Glenn down with him into a flood of walkers. But is that really what happened? Some people are saying that because Nicholas fell on top of Glenn, that the walkers were biting into him and not Glenn. Now, personally, I don't subscribe to this theory because a group of walkers that size, they're going to be biting into both of them. I mean, that they would eat the guy on top and then get around to Glenn later would just be bad writing. Another theory is because Nicholas was spacing out at the end there on top of the dumpster that him blowing his brains out and falling was all a dream sequence, or a Dallas if you watch my show. Now, if Glenn is alive, I would be more inclined to believe this theory than I would the first one. And some evidence here to support the theory that Glenn is alive is Stephen Young has been spotted on filming locations after his character's supposed death. Another one is you've seen clips of Glenn in the Season 6 preview that we haven't seen on the show yet. And then finally, Stephen Yun wasn't on Talking Dead after his character's supposed death. Okay, well I'm going to play devil's advocate and shoot down all these fan theories right now. A. He's doing a dream sequence with Maggie like what Laurie did with Rick after she died. B. The clips that the shows and movies use in their trailers versus what they use in the actual show or movie aren't always the same. And C. Publicity stunt. Of course, I'd like Glenn not to be dead, but typically The Walking Dead doesn't kid around with their character deaths. But anyone who even sort of cares is going to be watching next Sunday. So, like I said, smart planning by AMC. Okay, moving on to Star Wars news now. And of course, everybody was going nuts last week about the new Star Wars Episode 7 trailer, but I don't think anybody was more excited than the people who were in it. Congratulations to Daisy Ridley and John Boyega. No matter where your careers go from here, and I hope they go nowhere but up, you guys will never be forgotten. And, just as important, you guys are now action figures. Now on to the other side of the Disney spectrum. Last week we got our first full trailer for Jessica Jones playing on Netflix next month. Some of the best stuff in the trailer was we got our first look at Luke Cage and a little teaser of David Tennant as Kilgrave and just what he's capable of. The full first season of Jessica Jones becomes available on Netflix November 20th. But another female hero we saw this week was the premiere of Supergirl on CBS. What did you guys think? Personally, I was pretty impressed with this show. There's plenty of action and they throw a lot of Easter eggs our way that a lot of you non-comic savvy people probably didn't catch. Like, for instance, director Hank Henshaw. Any ideas, guys? Maybe this will help. Yeah! That's him. My only complaints is that Callista Flockhart as Cat Grant is just a little too bitchy for my taste. I wish there was even the slightest possibility that Superman would guest star in the future. And, why is this show not taking place in the Flash Arrow universe? I mean, this just seems like a missed opportunity to build on that continuity. 
Also in Superman news, apparently a Krypton TV series set to take place 200 years before the events of Man of Steel is in development at Sci-Fi. And all I can say is, why? I mean, seriously, does anybody really care about a pre-Superman Krypton? I mean, this whole premise just sounds expensive and boring, a bad combination. Now over to the CW, where we're getting our first look at Caitlin Snow as Killer Frost. And as you can see, Caitlyn is looking good with her newfound powers, but what does this mean for the character? Is she going to become evil like her comic book counterpart? Are we going to break up the Star Labs team? Is she going to attack the Flash, her friend and confidant? All these questions make me sad. But I guess we're all going to have to find out what happens in the weeks to come. Now on to Fox. Guys, I really wanted to do one episode without doing any Fox bashing. I really did. But I couldn't do it. They make it too easy for me. I mean, they practically write the material for me. But hey, I'll start with a compliment. Tomorrow night is the premiere of the Bone Sleepy Hollow crossover event. Take a look. Is there a cosplay competition going on? Do I look as though I have just beamed from the planet Vulcan? Fox Thursday. Prepare for the wildest crossover event of the season. It's Halloween. All bets are off. When Booth and Bones meet Abby and Crane. This could be a history-making discovery. What do you say we do this, Crane? Nice coat. Two genius teams. <laughs> one killer Halloween crossover. We gotta get him out of there. I've seen a lot like this before. Your way works, too. The two-hour Bones Sleepy Hollow Halloween crossover event. Thursday on Fox. Hey, great job for once, Fox. I'm actually excited about that one. I wish I could give the same compliment to your movie studio company. Last week, a lot of people, including myself, got excited about a rumor that Fox was selling the Fantastic Four movie rights back to Disney and Marvel. Well, unfortunately, all our hopes were for naught, because not only is Fox hanging on to the Fantastic Four rights, but they are going ahead with a sequel to this summer's Fantastic Four movie. <sighs> So let me get this straight. You made two Fantastic Four movies a few years back. You barely made a profit on those two. Marvel then offers to buy the franchise back from you. You say no. Then you try to reboot the franchise. And according to sources, to this date, you have barely made half of your money back. So then when you could sell the franchise back, which in your hands is a money pit, back to the original owners, you instead decide to throw more money into it. Does that make sense to anybody else? I mean, who do you think you're hurting here, Fox? No, you can't have your precious Fantastic Four back, Marvel. We're just going to keep sinking money into them so we can legally keep them for no other reason than because we don't want you to have them. You're just going to have to keep making billions of dollars with the characters you already have without your precious Fantastic Four. <laughs> It's kind of like borrowing Marvel's gun, accidentally shooting yourself in the foot, and then not wanting to return the gun because you plan on shooting yourself in the other foot a little later. But hey, it's Fox. What do you expect? All right, guys, that does it for entertainment news. Now let's get into the Halloween spirit with a Halloween movie challenge. And a lot of these questions were hard to answer as I love so many movies in these genres, but I did the best I could, and here's what I came up with. First question, favorite zombie movie? Well, for this question, I had to split it up into two categories, slow zombies and fast zombies. For slow zombies, I had to give it to the original, George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead, where it all started. For fast zombies, I had to give it to a Romero remake, the 2004 Dawn of the Dead. Best vampire movie? Well, this was a tough decision as there are so many great vampire movies out there. A couple of the close calls for me were the 2010 Let Me In and the original Fright Night, but eventually I had to give it to the 1987 Lost Boys. Best werewolf movie? Now, not as crowded a field as vampire and zombie movies, but still a pretty tough choice. I wanted to give it to Monster Squad, but since it's not strictly a werewolf movie, I couldn't do it. So when I thought about it, I gave it to, and I know some people are going to hate me for this, the 2005 film Curse. Post your angry comments if you must. Best Halloween themed movie? Well, while there are several films that fit this category, I think in the end you have to give it to the original 1978 Halloween. Biggest horror movie icon? Well, no disrespect to Mr. Michael Myers, but I think you have to give that title to Jason Voorhees. Best Halloween family film? Well, I think a lot of people out there would get upset with me if I didn't pick the classic Hocus Pocus. Best Halloween animated film? Well, I know at least one person would disown me if I didn't pick Nightmare Before Christmas for this one. 
And finally, scariest movie of all time. Well, I think that title does and always will belong to The Exorcist. Now, a lot of people say that it's not all that scary anymore because we've all become so desensitized to things we see in movies and television, but you ask anybody who was a teenager in 1973 and saw it in theaters, they'll tell you how scary it was. Alright guys, that does it for the Halloween Movie Challenge. Be sure to post your own picks in the comments section. Now let's move on to this week's review of The Last Witch Hunter starring Vin Diesel. In this film, Vin Diesel plays an immortal warrior charged with policing the use of magic in the witch community around the world. Now obviously this film had some exciting parts, but I found it to be just a little bit slow in the middle. And aside from one small twist at the end, it was a bit predictable. I did enjoy Rose Leslie's performance as Vin Diesel's uh, witch ally Chloe, but not enough to warrant a better score. The Last Witch Hunter is playing in theaters now, and I give it two and a half popcorns out of four. Alright, now on to this week's very special Halloween movieism, and this movieism is called Failure to Finish. And guys, this is what happens in just about every horror movie out there. The girl or the intended victim gets the drop on the killer, hits them over the head with a lamp or a vase or a baseball bat or something, and the killer is down on the ground, and at this point, they should be bashing or stomping his head in until he's just a big pile of mushy goo on the floor. But do they do that? No, they run away, and the killer gets back up and starts chasing them. And oftentimes, they'll drop the weapon they had while they're running. Kids, they know, you know? They have a real sense of who's good, who's bad. And your daughter, she's just... <laughs> Okay, Cookie, you got him good with that fire extinguisher, and now his head is in a prime position on those steps. So what you need to do is you need to run down those steps, and you take your foot, and you need to stomp it into his head until there ain't nothing left of it, and then you need to stomp it some more. See? She didn't listen. Nobody ever listens to me. Okay, he set himself up there. He fell off the chair, he's on the ground, he dropped his pitchfork, all you gotta do is pick it up and jam it into his head! Let's see what you do. What are you doing? Why are you walking away? Oh no. Alright, Jamie Lee Curtis, you uh, you know uh, you're in a bit of trouble here. Michael Myers is on the loose. All your friends are dead. Phone's not working. Okay, but don't panic. You know what to do. You're gonna curl up in the fetal position. Okay, that's always a safe bet when there's a killer on the loose. You just go ahead with that. But you need a weapon. You need a weapon. What do you do? You get a Okay, you got a sewing needle. Okay, that's good. Oh, oh, oh no, there's Michael Myers. Okay, okay, all, all right, you stabbed him in the neck. All right, that's good. And Michael is down. Okay, you're good. And and you have his knife. Okay, so you should be, like, really going to town on him right now. You should be, like, you know, tearing him a new asshole with his own knife, right? No, you're, you're not going to do anything. You're just going to lay back down because, obviously, you killed Michael Myers with a sewing needle. Because it's that easy. And you're going to drop his knife. Okay, that's always a great thing to do. Hey, let's fast forward a little bit and see how that turns out for you. You can't kill the boogeyman. Oh, look at that. Michael Myers isn't dead. What a surprise. And he has his knife back. Just proof that you have to lose a few IQ points first to be in a horror movie. 
All right, kids, that just about does it for this episode. But remember, if I ever kill you, you'll be awake, you'll be facing me, and you'll be armed. Happy Halloween.